I multiply those together to get 6. And I still have a 2 under the radical. Here I've got 1, 2, 3 groups of 2, which means 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8 square roots of 2. And here I've got a group of 2 and a group of 3 multiplying to give me 6, and I still have a 3 under the radical. Now I can identify which ones are alike. Well, I've got two different terms here, basically, right? I've got square roots of 3 and square roots of 2. How many square roots of 3 do I have? 7. 1 plus 6 is 7. How many square roots of 2 do I have? Minus 2. And there's your answer. All right? It pays to know how to multiply. Do you know that my first grader is learning how to multiply? I'm like amazed. Westminster is so advanced. Send your kids to Westminster. I'm just, seriously, like last night she was talking about, I, I couldn't figure out, they're not teaching it as multiplication, but they're saying groups of, like two groups of five is ten, and two groups of two is four. And I was just like, what? Y'all aren't impressed. Okay. Now, what if we wanted to simplify something like this? Now, this is going to be in the midst of an addition and subtraction problem, but we haven't really looked at this yet. What do you think? If there's already a number out there. Whatever you pull out, multiply to it. This is all multiplication in this little bitty thing. There's no plus signs anywhere. So if I have 5 squared under here and I'm going to pull out a 5, what do I do with it? I multiply it to what's already out there. So that simplifies to 15 square roots of 2. All right? You want to know how you can check yourself on your calculator? On your calculator, enter 3 times the square root of 50 and then divide it by 15 times the square root of 2 and you should get 1 because it should be the same thing. Three square roots of 50 divided by 15 square roots of 2 should equal 1. Because that way you got to start worrying about your parentheses on your calculator. Okay, 50 reduces to 5 times 5 times 2. And since it's a square root, I can pull out a 5. And so that's where this 5 comes from. Because the square root of 25 is 5. But I already had a 3 out here. And I multiplied them together to get 15. All right, let's do another one. Um, 2 square roots of 46 plus 3 square roots of 18. Yeah. 
Now, once you simplify, you may not be able to add them together, but radicals must be in simplified form anyway. Does the first one simplify at all? It is simplified. Because under the radical, you've got a 2 and a 23, which neither one of them are perfect squares. So the first one is what it's going to be. But the second one, what can you take out? You can take out a 3, multiplying it by what was already out there to give you 9 square roots of 2. And no, they cannot be added together, but now that expression is simplified. Okay? Now, the most common error that's going to be made, because I've been doing this for a few years, is when you are simplifying these types of expression where there is a number already outside, you're going to forget about that number. And you're simply going to say, oh, take out a 3, 3 square roots of 2. Don't forget about that number, okay? Write it big, whatever. Don't leave it off as you're simplifying. Make sure that it's there. Yes? Uh, why did you multiply 2 and 23 back together? Because I can't take anything out, so I want this just as a final product. Okay? Once I've simplified and pulled everything out that I can, I put everything that's under back together. All right, now I want you to look at this. I don't think you have any in the uh, homework assignment like this, but it's good to see. Are those two terms alike? What do you think makes them alike? The variable and the radical, okay? The radical itself has exactly the same thing, square root of 2y. The variable, that's a whole number, is exactly the same. They're both x. So now we're combining our like term rules. All right? What remains unchanged? That remains unchanged. That is the whole identification of those two things saying that they're alike. What do I actually add? The whole numbers, two and three, to get? Five, okay? So when you start putting variables and radicals, and we could even stick it over a fraction, the variables have to be the same, the radicals have to be the same, the denominators have to be the same. All those rules still apply. Just because you combine them, it doesn't change anything, okay? So, what about now? Are these terms the same? No. This is x cubed. This is x squared. This is the square root of 3x. This is the cubed root of 3x. So no, those terms are not alike. You just keep them like that and they're separate. Okay? All right. That's the answer. You can't do anything else to it. All right, tomorrow we are going to start multiplying and dividing. We're going to even use FOIL with radicals. All right, but it's simply taking all the things that we've learned and putting it together. Tonight's your homework, page 254 to 256, 15 through 24 every third, and then 36, 38, 70, 72.